So it's Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out, and I'm delighted to be joined by the new English middleweight champion, Brad Pauls. Brad, how you doing, mate? Very good, mate. Very happy. Um, good to see you, mate. Thanks for having me on. No, as soon as I saw the result from the weekend, I thought, yeah, we've got to, we've got to have you on as soon as possible. You're still bearing the scars of battle, of course, but I'm sure that win for the English title made it all worthwhile. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've got a little bruise, but... Um... I'm used to it. Yeah, it was um brilliant on Saturday, brilliant atmosphere, brilliant night. You know what I sold out your calls like and um it was amazing. It was the first time in my career that um I got booed on the way to the ring. <laughs> he he sold sold a lot of tickets, Mitchell. Really lovely bloke. First time I got booed on the way to the ring and I liked it. The weirdest thing. I felt like a villain. Um but it was brilliant in there, brilliant night, brilliant show. And uh, listened to my coach and got the stoppage in the eighth. Of course, this was your second crack at the English title. The first one, you came up just short against Tyler Denny, who himself's going for the European title soon. So it's onwards and upwards for him. What was the process after suffering that first defeat to kind of rebuild and get to what you've just achieved? Um, obviously, it was a really bit of pills to swallow. I absolutely hate losing. I had it lost in, I think, eight years at the time. Um but you have to have a look at yourself. You have to ask some questions. And I didn't dwell on it too long. I went straight back in the gym. And within, I think, seven weeks, I'd, I'd boxed again and got a win. Um, and then very shortly after that, the opportunity presented itself. I think I got 16 weeks notice for this fight. So I was straight focused again. I looked at my camp. I looked for what I could add to improve. So I added a nutritionist. I added a mindset coach. Any area I could add any percentage and... I really invested in myself to get that win because I couldn't tell you how badly I wanted that belt. Um, yeah, there was no stopping me on Saturday. How significant were those changes? So the nutritionist, uh, first of all, because I'm sure you've always eaten quite clean anyway, but how different was it? Um, he didn't come in and rip up the whole script and change every single thing that I ate because I wasn't, f I know a little bit, I wasn't far off what I was doing. But the, my idea was right, but there was just... You can think you know it all, you don't know it all. And there was ways to add a few percentage, um, which he, he helped with. And there's a few ways with after the weigh-in, rehydration, stuff like this, their area that make it a little bit more efficient. So um, I think that added two, three, four percent maybe. Um, so, and like in, in this sport, you've got to fight and crawl and dive for these extra percentages. So, yes, it was worth doing. And what about Shall the mind? Sorry, shout out Jack Coke, nutritionist. He's a good lad. Good stuff. Um, yeah, what about a mindset coach? Is that something you'd ever dabbled in before or was it all new to you? Um, I, I've actually started with this mindset coach before my Southern Area title in 2019. It's called Lee Sports Mode. And um, I just started to step it up and take it more and more seriously um, and just add any percent I can. Um and yeah, I think it definitely helps with the nerves. It helps with the prep. It helps believe in your preparation. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely worth adding in. And you uh, famously were a guest on the George Groves Boxing Club podcast. And the whole theme of that was bouncing back from your first defeat. I'm assuming they'll be inviting you back now if they haven't already. Yeah. The um, deck messaged me the day after and he was like, well done. And, um, he got me to send in a voice note about uh, about how I feel about it all. But yeah, I had them to thank because they did boost me up a little bit. It was coming off a loss. You don't expect to go on a podcast like that. You expect to be forgotten about. Um, but they showed me a bit of love and a bit of time. So yeah, maybe, maybe I'll do a second appearance as the champ. would be good. What would you kind of recommend to someone in that position where they have just come off their first loss? And in your case, as you said, you were unbeaten for eight years before that happened. What's the kind of, if there's one or two key things, what do you need to do when that happens? I think you need to be honest with yourself and look at why. Why did it happen? Because people, people are going to try to figure it out and critique it. Why did that happen? You have to do it yourself and be really honest with yourself. Um, and what can you do to make sure it doesn't happen again? Um, don't be too disheartened. Like We're humans. Everyone takes little bumps and scrapes on the way. Like No one gets it right spot on first time for everything um but if anything it motivated me so i suppose it's down to the person but yeah just 
as long as you learn, it's like it's typical, but as, if you lose, but as long as you learn, it doesn't dishearten you, then it's absolutely fine. And you've won Southern Area, you've won English, your current English champion. Is it British next then? Is it the traditional route? Um, that would be ideal, yeah. I think uh, I'll probably have to get a defence in or something in between. But, um, yeah, that's my absolute dream, Danny. Absolute dream. The best best set of belts in a row, I think. Southern Area, English, British is just uh, the best set of belts. So, yeah, maybe next year for the British, but it's a very busy category, the, the middleweight division, and there's a queue for the English, there's a queue for the British. Obviously, I've got Linus doing a final eliminator in two weeks. So, maybe next year. We're talking of the British. You obviously, the board put out uh, Denzel Bentley and Hamza Shiraz, who are both with Queensbury. Well, it doesn't appear that's going to happen next or, or maybe not even any time soon. And then Tyler Denny, who you had that close fight with, he's now challenging for the European title very soon. Who do you kind of think is the best of those three, if we consider those some of the top three domestic middleweights? Bentley. I've got to say, Bentley. I, I watched Bentley spar and I sparred Bentley a few times. Bentley's above British level for me. Um, he's quite quite a bit past um, British level. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's plenty of good names out there, plenty of big names out there. But I'd, I'd put Bentley above everyone. I'd imagine he'd vacate soon. He's defended it a million times. Um, yeah, so I'm not really sure. It's a constant moving landscape of boxing. It could all change in an instant, but I'm not really sure how it all pans out. And you've got uh, Tyler Denny, as I said, challenging uh, Signani for that European title. Is that kind of a dream rematch for you? I mean, it'd mean kind of skipping over the British temporarily, I guess. But, you know, the only man to defeat you, it'd have a European championship on the line. Yeah, yeah, yes. It'd be a lot to gain from it, a European title. And it'd be absolutely lovely to an Avenger loss. Um, yeah, one, one for the future. But... Ideally, if I, if I could pick it, I'd, I'd want the British more than the European. Um, but if the opportunity presents itself, then yeah, absolutely. What's your promotional situation at the moment? Because I think last time we spoke in depth, you were with Wasserman, quite new to joining them as well. The last two fights have been on different shows. Are you, are you still with them? No, no, long, long gone from Wasserman. Uh, thank God. I'm a free man. <laughs> uh, didn't end... Ideally, but it's one of those things. Box in, we move on. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm a free man, but I think having the English might open a few doors and I'd, I'd love to get back on TV and hopefully I'd love to get a defence on, on a on a televised show. Um, I see Chris Billum Smith's fighting in Bournemouth at the end of the year. And I think that's as close as Sky Sports will ever get to Cornwall as Bournemouth. And I know Chris. So I've already tried to put Feelers out there. I'd love to, the defense on the undercards. I've already messaged Chris actually. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. But ho hopefully, I'll, I'd like to get back on TV and not have to do small horn sell tickets again. You could be the man to bring a major boxing broadcaster to Cornwall. You know, eventually. <laughs> That's the. I've already tried, Daddy. I've already tried. Yeah, uh, there's not been a pro boxing show in Cornwall since nineteen. 70s, I believe, wow. and it's because they don't have a neuro type in an hour's drive that uh, doesn't have the infrastructure. Already looked, um, but yeah, if I could, I would, and I'm sure I'd sell. I had the I had load of tickets, but it's yeah, it's just a tricky situation. Close, I can get to Plymouth. So basically, you're gonna have to campaign to your local MP, <laughs> get, get a hospital neurological unit sorted first, and then you can worry about a show, yeah. Yeah, just a few hurdles on the way, Danny. We can... <laughs> just a couple, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you as well, um, we saw Conor Ben return at the weekend. It looks like his next fight will be against Eubank Jr. at middleweight, so your division. What what do you make of that fight? How do you kind of weigh it up? Um, it's chopped and changed how I thought the fight would go as time's gone on a lot. Like, well, before their first fight, I was like, decided on one result and then now it's completely changed um, oh, I don't know I don't know I don't know I really don't know uh, see I know quite I like Connor um, Eubank's quite big and strong isn't he I'm going to have to sit on the fence mate I don't know I don't know 
Can't do it. I'm sorry to do this. Can't do it. <laughs> That's all right. Did you um? Did you catch any of Ben's comeback? I imagine you were sleeping or celebrating still at the time. I was. Oh no! I come back and watched it. Yeah, yeah. I got the tune. Um, come back and watched it. Yeah. Um, didn't look as good as he normally does. The other guy could take a shot, but uh, yeah. So that's why my my opinion on the fight drops and changes. Before I'd have been like, yeah, Ben smashes him. Now I don't know. You're probably the same, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, he's been out for a long time, isn't he? So it's how much of it is, you know, rust that he's going to shed in time for Eubank and how much of it's just, you know, harm for being on the shelf for so long he'll never get back. So it's hard to say, isn't it? But yeah. As you said, Eubank's coming off, uh, like, he's 160, as we've said, but he's coming off the best win of his career as well. So he's in a good place at the moment. Yeah. So, yeah, hard to pick against him, but... Okay, tricky. Yeah, well, well, we'll both sit on the fence then. <laughs> we'll, we'll be comfortable yeah. there together. I think it's comfy on the fence. Um, if the Bournemouth dream or one of the dreams doesn't come off, when are we likely to next see you out? Um, I'd like to fight in December. I, don't, I like. I need to be active. I don't like sitting out the ring and waiting and waiting and waiting until March next year. I need to be active. So ideally, uh, December. Um, and yeah, get that first defence in nice and quick. Uh. But at the minute, I said to Amanda, don't speak to me until Friday because I've got a week off. So <laughs> I'll know more on Friday. He's probably had a few offers. I've had a few people call me out already, actually. But um, but I'm not worrying about that until Friday, about a week off. Is it kind of nice in a way to be in that position now? Because you've got a title, you're not going to have to worry about being active so much? Yeah. Yeah, you've still got a target on your back, isn't you? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's good. There's more, more opportunities. Even before the fight, I'd had... Four people called me out, and then since the <laughs> fight, I've had one more. I imagine there's going to be a few more. Um, I don't take it personally; it's all right. They just want my belt, but maybe I put their name in a hat or something and do a little, and then pick it out. And whoever, don't know. We'll see. You could live stream it. You can like that will help build the fight itself as well. You know. I and like the winner it. is. Yeah, it could be yeah. you. It'd be like the lottery. <laughs> I love it. The Brad Paul's lottery. Um, yeah. no, great stuff. Mate, just before I let you go, remind people out there how they can find you on social media so they can get to know the Yuki Bomb a bit better. Thank you. Yeah, just Brad Pauls on everything. On Instagram, Brad Pauls, Twitter, Brad Pauls, Facebook, Brad Pauls, Professional Boxer. Follow the journey. I'm just posting boxing content. Um, check it out. English champ. Great stuff. Really, really, really happy for you, mate. And um, yeah, let's catch up again soon. Thank you very much, mate. Speak to you soon. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.